This is a thorium-230 standard. It's an aqueous thorium nitrate solution. This is one of those reference materials, in this case for thorium. It contains, as stated on the package, exactly 2.467 kilobecquerels, equivalent to a mass of 3.3 micrograms. The activity and dose rate are limited. Well, it doesn't have to be highly active, it just needs to be standardized. This is why it remains sealed. First some nuclear data and then onto its application in geochronology. Thorium-230 is a radiogenic radionuclide. It's not primordial but still occurs naturally. It is part of the uranium-radium series. Half-life is 75,400 years. It decays into radium-226 but also undergoes cluster emission of neon-24 with a probability of 5.8 times 10 to the power of minus 11% and spontaneous fission has also been observed. The most common alpha energy is the 4687 kilo electron volt line. Its specific activity is 762 megabecquerel per gram. Thorium normally is isotopically pure, meaning 100% of all natural occurring thorium is the isotope 232. The decay of natural uranium also produces the isotopes 234 and 230. Thorium-230 makes up about 0.02%. Now let's move on to the application. Geochronology, which is the science of dating minerals, fossils and sediments. Thorium is used for dating marine sediments. The uranium concentration in seawater is constantly about 3.3 micrograms per liter, with a water volume of 1.4 times 10 to the power of 21 liters. This corresponds to 4.4 quadrillion tons of uranium in the water. For comparison, Kazakhstan, the world's most active country in this field, produced 21,227 tons in the year 2022. So there's a lot of uranium, but it's extremely difficult to extract. Back to thorium. Uranium is very water soluble as the uranyl ion. As it decays, thorium forms. Because thorium-234 is so short-lived, it's negligible. Thorium easily forms poorly soluble compounds and incorporates itself into the sediment. This means that when the sediment is in contact with water, the thorium-230 activity remains constant. When the sediment is buried, thorium-230 decays. Natural thorium-232, which is chemically identical, has always been in the sediment as it practically starts as water-insoluble compound. By using the ratio of thorium-230 and 232, the age of the sediment can be determined. This dating method using this radionuclide is called ionium-thorium dating. Ionium is a very old name for the thorium-230 isotope. But this only works if the following criteria are met. The thorium-230 to 232 ratio is, even in very small amounts, constant. Both isotopes precipitate equally. Since they are chemically identical, they should. And any detritus, loose mineral substance from erosion, does not contain either isotope in a deviating concentration. And after deposition, the isotopes do not migrate within the sediment. If these criteria are met, the measurements can be relied upon. For the measurements, the vices, in this case the ICPMS, must be calibrated. Calibration requires a standard with a certified isotope ratio to calibrate against. In this case it's the thorium-230 to 232 ratio with about 0.99 to 1, which is basically 50-50. And this can be used for calibration. Do you know what else can be done with such a standard? Another method of marine sediment dating. This involves looking at the constant activity ratio of the isotopes protactinium-231 and thorium-230. Yes, protactinium actually has real-world application. I have already uploaded a complete video about protactinium-231. Comes from the natural occurring uranium-235 actinium-227 decay series. Here too, the measurement method is based on the different solubilities of thorium and protactinium. Protactinium is also extremely poorly soluble in water, but ever so slightly better than thorium, at least in the context of seawater. This means it stays in the water longer and is slightly less likely to be swept away by settling particles. So it remains in the water longer and this time is called residence time. For protactinium-231, it's 130 years. For thorium-230, it's 20 years. Because the insoluble thorium is swept away by particles faster, this can lead to a spatial separation of protactinium and thorium, which can be used to measure ocean circulation rates. This only works if a constant amount of both radionuclides is being produced. 
the activity ratio of protactinium to thorium is 0.093. The ratio with numbers uranium-234 produces 0.42 millibecquerels per cubic meter per year of thorium-230 in seawater and uranium-235 produces 0.0388 millibecquerels per cubic meter per year of productinium-231. This results in a ratio of 0.093. Now productinium stays in the water longer while thorium is carried into the depths of the ocean. You can see this well in this graph where the activity concentration in decays per minute per 1000 liters is plotted against the ocean depth. The ratio of about 0.1 is considered in the axis. And as you can see that there is relatively less dissolved thorium in the upper ocean and more solid thorium in the deeper regions. This was a nice insight of the application of thorium-230 in paleoceanography and I even learned something about another application of productinium-231. This was a bit out of my field but of course sources are always linked in the video description. We have many more of those reference materials and the thorium solution is just one of them. A special thanks goes to the working group of analytics and fundamental nuclear chemistry from Dr. Erik Strupp and the division of nuclear chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, Goodbye.